Hi there, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ashley Baylor with a check of your latest forecast. Well, we have three hurricanes that stretch from the Gulf of Mexico all the way into the Atlantic, but I'm really only focused on two hurricanes here. That's because Hurricane Katia, which is in the Gulf of Mexico, doesn't really pose a threat to the U.S., so unfortunately I can't uh, spend a ton of time on that because I do have to spend a lot of time on Hurricane Irma. We also have Hurricane Jose out there. It has uh, picked up a little bit. Winds are now at 85 miles per hour. It's moving west-northwest at 17 miles per hour, and at least according to the latest track, it is expected to potentially increase to a major Category 3 hurricane in the coming days, but still, at least at this juncture of time, uh, doesn't pose a threat to the U.S. Here's a look at Hurricane Irma, though. Of course, this is the one we've been talking about ad nauseum at this point, and yeah, it'll continue to be that way through the weekend. Still a very strong Category 5 hurricane with winds at 185 miles per hour. The winds have actually been at 185 miles per hour for the last 33 hours, so it's pretty incredible. As you can see, it's already barreled across the Lesser Antilles through the Virgin Islands, and now uh, the next islands to basically be affected by Irma will be Turks and Caicos. You can see the eye is just north of Puerto Rico, so Puerto Rico did not take a direct hit from Irma in the sense it did not make landfall there. There. And you got to remember that uh, with these 185 mile per hour winds, they extend about 45 miles per hour from the eye itself. So they didn't even have to deal with the strongest sustained winds, but uh, still had some very severe wind gusts down there. Here's a look at the latest track on Irma and is expected to remain a Category 5 hurricane all the way into tomorrow evening with winds at about 175 miles per hour. So a little bit of friction moving over land through Turks and Caicos into the southern Bahamas may weaken it to about 160 miles per hour by the time we get to Friday, but that is still a Category 5 hurricane. Now we take a look at Saturday and as you can see by Saturday it could uh, downgrade to a category 4 hurricane but take note of something that is forecast to have winds at about 155 miles per hour to be a category 5 hurricane winds have to be sustained at 157 so uh, it could still be a category 5 hurricane by the time it makes the approach to southern Florida and therein lies uh, another problem if it actually makes the approach to southern Florida. Even though the latest track from the National Hurricane Center has it making landfall somewhere near uh, Miami-Dade County and making its way through Florida and then into southern uh, and then eventually in southern Georgia and into uh, South Carolina, it is still possible that the direct track may just have it skirting the east coast of Florida and maybe making landfall near Savannah, Georgia or Hilton Head, South Carolina. So still a little bit of wiggle room with the exact track here. And it's hard to be definitive about hurricanes. They're so Massive. I mean, they really have minds on their own, so very, very difficult to be definitive about this. But as you can see, our spaghetti models, sure enough, most of them actually want to take this just east of Florida and then making landfall near Hilton Head or Charleston, South Carolina. So that is something to keep in mind over the coming days. But here's a look at the American and the European model, the two models we talk about most often, even though, yes, there are others. As you can see, they're pretty consistent with wanting to bring this storm into southern Florida and then skirting along the coast, and then potentially maybe even making a secondary landfall near Savannah or, again, Hilton Head, South Carolina, possibly into Charleston, South Carolina, so that's why you can't really count that out. And one thing that has been consistent with these uh, forecast models is that once it does make landfall, wherever that may be from uh, Florida to South Carolina, it does bring the storm inland, which is good news for us because it'll keep the center of the storm to our west. And so we won't really feel uh, the full brunt of this storm, even though, yes, it will gradually weaken as it moves on land. But the fact that it will be west of us means that, yes, we'll get some rain, but at least we won't get that northeast wind. We'll actually get more of a south-southeast wind and so tidal flooding won't be as much of a concern. So a little bit of good news there. So here's what you can expect. Landfall really possible anywhere from Florida to even as far north as Wilmington, North Carolina. I don't want to count out North Carolina just yet. It's looking less likely but not completely out of the woods with this one. As far as the timing goes, if it makes landfall in Florida, that would likely be sometime early on Sunday. But if it doesn't make landfall until closer to Savannah or South Carolina, that may happen on Monday. So Sunday and Monday, that's the time frame we're kind of looking at right now. And as far as the effects for Hampton Roads in North Carolina go, again, rain and wind likely on Tuesday, but we could start to feel some effects in the form of rain as early as Monday. So unfortunately, lots to keep in mind over the next few days. Luckily, the next few days are going to be very quiet here in Hampton Roads in North Carolina. Lots of sunshine expected from Thursday right through the weekend. Temperatures will be comfortable. Humidity levels will be comfortable. So our primary focus is on early next week. All eyes on Irma.